Hi, and thanks for listening to Gossip with Celebrity, where we talk about celebrity gossip, entertainment news, fashion, and royals. This week, we're talking about the great wait for Duchess Meghan to give birth, Olivia Munn targeting the Fug Girls, Game of Thrones, and all the celebrity splits that happened. Our user question is about publicists contacting us, and we end with our weekly feature, the comments of the week. The stories, photos, and memes we talk about here can be found at celebitycom slash podcast, and the link is also in our show notes. Hi, I'm Katie, the founder and editor of celebitycom and I write as Celebity. And I'm Chandra, the head writer for Celebity, and I write as Kaiser. So I asked you to record earlier today than we normally schedule, which I really appreciate just because I am miserable, (laughs) but I'll try to be happy and nice. Yeah, we both get our periods at the same time, only (laughs) we have like completely different reactions to it. I feel like 10 kinds of hell before my period. This month was really bad. I was like very achy and my hips felt like they were falling out and I don't know, it it was just weird. But then as soon as I got my period, I felt like a million times better. But you're totally different. I've never really had that. Yeah, I always get sick during it. And that's why I had that procedure. And after I had the procedure, it's been so much worse. (laughs) It's just awful. I I don't know. I'm pretty close to getting a hysterectomy. So if that happens, I'll we'll let you know and we'll tell you ahead of time if we need to take time off from the podcast. But well, I know that you were sort of talking to me about having a hysterectomy last month. I'm glad that you waited and really thought about it because it's a huge decision and it's like major yeah. surgery. I do think that you should like give it some real thought. I know that you're in pain right now, but just like think about it. I know you are. I will. Today is the worst day so far. I thought it was getting better, but I mean, since it got better like a week ago, it's just been this journey, whatever. I don't want to sit here and bitch and sound like old person. <laughs> but <laughs> I am. Um, so I wanted to thank um, Summer and Owen Lomom. They both talked to me on Twitter and the direct messages about, you know, this decision. And they were really helpful. Gossip wise, this week has been interesting. There have been some really good stories. And we knew that a lot of stuff was going to be happening with the royal baby and Beyonce's homecoming. Taylor Swift's got new stuff oh, yeah. coming out. There's a lot of interesting gossip and celebrity stories so and royal stories megan still hasn't had her baby yet and last week we were waiting for that as well Mm -hmm. it feels like it's going to be any day now or that they might might just wait a few days after she has it to make the announcement no they can't do that (laughs) they can't no they can't no they cannot it's like some sort of royal rule or something and (laughs) it would hugely blow up in their faces if they didn't announce it as she was like going into labor. Okay. Reporters would absolutely throw a fit. So her mom's in London, so we can assume she's due any time now. Yeah. And today was Anzac Day where Harry went with um Kate. what's her face? Kate. <laughs> Harry went with Kate. <laughs> <laughs> He went with (laughs) what's-her-face. The other one. The sister. (laughs) The button one. The buttony one. (laughs) She delivered this time, man. And then her husband, William, was in New Zealand for Anzac Day, and that was pre-planned because of the horrible terrorist attack there. So he was out. We can assume Megan hasn't had her baby yet because she would have announced it. There were so many stories leading up to this that were just crazy. The main one originated in the Sunday Times of London, and that's total reputable paper, not a tabloid, as you pointed out, that Harry and Meghan would take a job overseas, you know, in Australia, Canada, or Africa. Right. Let's just point out that the Sunday Times, uh, this did not come from like a typical royal reporter. This like came that's from That's what I'm a saying. Real, yes. Yeah. It, it came from a real reporter who had multiple sources, especially in, like, I feel, Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace, which is now solely for Will and Kate. It was not a tabloid. This is not Daily Mail or The Sun. This is the Sunday Times. Right, right. And the story originally was that William and Buckingham Palace courtiers are looking for a way to send Harry and Meghan away. It was very much of, Uh, People are conspiring behind Harry and Meghan's back 
to send them off somewhere. Okay. And it okay. was because William was super jealous. He is super mad that they're getting so much attention. Harry and Meghan are getting so much attention. So that was the original part of the story. And then within, like, literally within hours, the story kind of shifted and changed when everyone was like, whoa, that's a really screwed up thing to do for one brother to do to another brother. The story changed to, oh, Harry and Meghan want this. They want to go away. William is just supporting them. William is just trying to help them, you know, find a way to move away. The follow-up report in Harper's Bazaar was made by this Omid Scobie guy, and mm -hmm. he's a source who's had ties to Harry and Meghan before, so we can assume this is from them. I mean, that, that's Harper's Bazaar. That's not, again, not a tabloid. And Scobie has had a lot of detailed information, and he has deep sources within Camp Sussex, let's just say that. I think that Megan and her friends talked to them, talked to him. This story was that, yes, they have talked about doing some brief overseas trips, but of course they're not going to move out of the UK. Right. And I like how you wrote about that. What happened was William spun those really probably innocent conversations with his brother and sister-in-law or what he knew of their plans and made it sound like they wanted to move away because that mm -hmm. would work in his favor since they're getting so much influence. And then there was even stories in People magazine. Yeah. I mean, this is not just pure tabloid conjecture. Right. And the thing about like the Harper's Bazaar clapback, if you want to call it that, it was so clearly from Camp Sussex. And it was so clearly directed at William saying like, if we are going to take advice from anyone, we're just going to take advice from the Queen and Charles. But obviously, we're going to spend years here in England. We're not going to move off for months at a time or years at a time because this is our home. What I pointed out from the Harper's Bazaar piece is that the majority of the article was written as a source close to the Sussexes. or So it's, you know, Sussex sources, Sussex sources, and then they can't get the Sussex source to say anything about Prince William directly. So they just have one poor guy at Kensington Palace saying, oh, William had nothing to do with this. Oh, he absolutely had nothing to do with this. That was very <laughs> deliberately worded. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the royal slews on Twitter gave you credit for that. And that you noticed that that specific detail about the story. It is very targeted. And what is even more bothersome is that Megan is due any minute. Yeah. And this is Harry's first baby. Like, even if you don't give a wit about your sister-in-law at least care about what your brother is thinking of and what he's doing. This isn't a time to just throw him under the bus or say, get out of the country. Yeah, and the you theory know. is, this is with a lot of the royal followers, you know, Twitter people. They say that this is all William trying to cover up the affair story with Rose Hanbury or Chumley, whatever her name is, the Marchioness of Chumley. Um, <laughs> that's her title. And yeah, I know. It's just funny. It sounds fake. It totally sounds fake. Yeah, it does sound fake. I think that he is trying to cover up the affair stories. I really do. But I don't think that's at the root of the let's send Harry and Meghan away stuff. That's separate, I feel. I feel like that is a power move. And that's what People Magazine said, too. Yeah. I feel like William just wants Harry and Meghan away. He wants them out of sight. He wants them to stop getting so much attention. And then separately, he's pushing bad stories about them to hide his own scandalous affair or possible affair with Rose Hanbury. Something happened. Yeah. There. <laughs> I, I agree. William cheated, probably. Today, who was the source on Twitter who tweeted and deleted that there was a media blackout in the UK on covering Prince William, which we've heard for a couple weeks that there's been a media blackout around him. Yeah, well, I mean, the media blackout can be seen every day that there's no new information and no story in the Daily Mail or the Sun about it. The blackout is just obvious to anyone who's following the news. But a uh, Twitter person who said it, Zir Asfal, as well, I don't know, he's some kind of journalist. 
Okay, so he's some kind of royal journalist, and he said that there, there's a blackout around William. Yeah, something like that. The cheating story. This whole thing, I, it just bothers me that it's happening right around when Megan is supposed to give birth, and that it should be focused on that. But William doesn't care. No, he doesn't. He's just trying to save his own skin in like 10 different ways. All he has to do is step up and be more like his dad. And that's another thing, too. These people are not next in line. <laughs> William and Kate are not next in line. I know. His dad is. And his grandma's still around, you know? I mean, her mom lived to be very old. Just stop it, you know? They keep on putting mm. it into all these articles. He's preparing to be king. No, he's not. He's. You got 30 years left, dude. You know, come on. He should be preparing to be Prince of Wales. But he's not interested in any of those preparations at all. Or else he... What is his cause? He doesn't have, like, a serious cause. His dad loves environmental stuff. They do a lot of work. What is his cause? Like, what is he going to champion? Don't say bad things about Prince William. That's that's his big cause. <laughs> oh, that's why he got into that internet yeah, bullying exactly. thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. His big cause is don't say mean things about me. Don't gossip about me unless I want you to. Speaking of that, uh -huh. today, Olivia Munn, purple potato girl, <laughs> decided <laughs> to post this bizarre rant against the Fug Girls. That's um, Jessica and Heather. They run Go Fug Yourself, which is a wonderful fashion blog that's been around forever. We link with them. They're one of our link partners. They run such a nice site. It's so above board. They're just funny and sweet and you wrote today joyful. That's a good way to describe them. They're really nice people who say nice things. Like even when they don't like an outfit, you know, they'll make it funny and not cruel. Yes. They're never cruel, never like, oh, this person is horrible because she wore a bad dress. They never say anything like that. They never even called her out on her many statements before which were bullshit <laughs> around 2016 she showed up with an entirely different face yeah like you can look at earlier pictures of her face and she, she had different eyes different nose that may have been i'm sure she had rhinoplasty maybe an eye lift maybe that was achieved with also a ton of botox and fillers that, but she looked so different she denied all that you know she, whatever <laughs> i liked her i came around on her i never did well, she was really brave to speak out against Brett Ratner and the way he targeted and sexually harassed her. And she also spoke out against the pedophile who was hired for the predator. Yeah, I remember all that. And good for her. But she's also a fucking asshole. I just want to say something, though. I had a point amongst this ramble. Yeah. Her male co-stars didn't support her. Like, maybe they had a lot of other reasons why they didn't do that. That's all. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just about this one thing. Yeah, I mean, honestly, she's been well known as an asshole for many years. Do you remember when she was saying her go-to line was "You can't be hot and smart at the same time"? Oh, for God's but I sake. am. You remember? She said that like in five different interviews. Yeah, she's always been an asshole, and yeah, she did a few good things a few years. I really ago. Really thought she changed. I did. I did. I liked her for a little bit. So. She posted this rant against the Fug girls who, I mean, I looked through the last two posts they wrote on her. They were so nice. In the last one, she was wearing this really ugly metallic and pastel striped suit with a high-waisted pants that had bell bottoms. Yeah, and I put that in the post. And all they wrote <laughs> was like, she looks like she's making a sequel to American Hustle that was went to straight to demand. Yeah, and it was all about her clothes. It was just entirely about the ugly ass suit and how it looked dated. That's all it was. Olivia wrote, blogs like theirs have been around for a while with their snarkiness and hypocrisy on full display. And we've accepted it because as women, we've become conditioned to believe that being publicly chastised is for our weight, our looks, or our choice in clothing is an acceptable part of our existence. She said a bunch of other crap about like feminism and how that somehow applies to this. It does not. And then she named them by, full, by their full names. And she said, they probably won't like this, but they'll just have to learn yeah. that when you come for anyone publicly, you've now entered the public domain and you've chosen your opponent. So she sounds like she's basically saying, let's mm -hmm. call out all these bloggers by name and post their pictures. It's like saying, I don't really like your blouse. And her responding, that's rape culture. No, it's not. <laughs> 
she's very obviously punching down. She's a celebrity with a huge platform, and she doesn't like to be criticized. She just wants everyone to kiss her ass. Everyone on Twitter is very pro fug girls, and we there's a lot of support for them. You were saying that she's punching down? Yeah, she's punching down. And if you're a celebrity with this huge platform, you know, targeting these two women who did nothing but make some comments about your outfit that you didn't like. And that's it. That that's the whole reason that you're going to dox them, that you're going to use their full names and post photos of them online. It was disturbing, you know? Yeah, it is. It would be one thing if she was accurately making a coherent case against someone who had written something really awful about her. Yes. But she totally mischaracterized what they do and their whole deal. That really bothers me. Exactly. All they're doing is saying, this is an ugly dress that you're wearing. And they're making fun of the dress, and they never, ever say anything about people's looks. They're not even pointing out how her face changed, which we have done multiple times. Yeah. You know? And which we will continue to do, because she's a liar. It's one thing to show up with a new face. It's another thing to show up with a new face and say that you got it through potatoes. Yeah. Which she did do. And it's scary. It sets a bad precedent that says that I'm not going to be open to criticism, or I'm going to, you know, out you. It's just ridiculous. And yeah, you were right about her. I say that we put her in the category of, you know, certain other celebrities that we just rarely to never cover. That's what I was going to ask you to. I would like to just skip covering her. Yep. Let's just skip it. Yeah. If she can't handle mild criticism of an outfit, then she doesn't deserve to be covered as a celebrity. No, she doesn't. I I think this might be indicative of how she's acting behind the scenes, too, on her career. And I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't get a lot of opportunities, like another celebrity we saw who sent us a big cease and desist and hasn't had a great career since. Yeah, I think there's probably something to that, because there are always rumors and stories about her. Obviously, there are a lot of women who get the reputation as being difficult for doing little to nothing, you know, like just having opinions. But I always felt like she got a reputation for being difficult because she's an asshole. So how could you I don't understand how you could write a big thing like this. That's two pages and post it. And as of now, it's still up. I don't know if she's going to dial this back, but everyone is telling her she's wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, she's got to be this way in all aspects of her life. Sorry. Yeah. If (laughs) if it's still up, then, yeah, she's she's just going to take whatever criticism because she believes that she's right and she won't even bother to actually go on go fuck yourself and see what they're really all about and how nice they really are all right so game of thrones is coming back sunday yeah by the time this podcast comes out we'll have watched uh the battle of winterfell we'll know who died we'll know who lived i mean i have a million theories and yeah i mean we're not gonna like get into it right now it's a really good series and i've been loving all of the conspiracies and i just think that people need to dial back the conspiracies just a little (laughs) bit just because you know there are only four three more episodes left when this podcast comes out they're not gonna like create a huge new plot twist Um. they really can't they just have to like kill off people (laughs) and you know there are all these theories going around about secret identities <laughs> and, oh, somebody's going to ride a dragon to King's Landing. I don't know. Oh, there's like know. extra dragons? Well, there are two left. Daenerys has two dragons, and then one of her dragons died and was made into an, an ice zombie dragon. So there's a third dragon that is in the control of the Night King. Oh, I didn't know that. I have a question. Yeah. So whenever somebody dies, do they directly go over to the White Walkers? Does it take them a minute and then they go? I mean, no. If you're in the north, like, okay, it didn't <laughs> used to be this way. It has to do with being in the, like, general vicinity of the Night King. I think that's it. Oh, so he has the power. Yeah, if you're within a mile, let's say, of the Night <laughs> King or one of the White Walkers, the big main White Walkers then you're going to, like, change. 
into a, a zombie and then the night king can like just touch you or like raise his hand or something like that and then you'll turn into a zombie so he can make his army bigger as yeah. he conquers people yeah okay and the people at winterfell the idea is that if they kill the night king then all of the undead goes away like they just all die Okay, all right. <laughs> it's complicated. I would like to see that. No, because I've watched a lot of zombie movies, and some of them, it takes them a while to reanimate. Some of them yeah. you have to be bitten, some you don't. So I didn't know how this worked. Yeah, it it's very scientific. <laughs> <laughs> Magical. <laughs> and then we heard three celebrity splits last week, and the main one was Adele and Simon Konecki. Is that how you pronounce his last name? Yeah, Konecki. They split after seven years together, and they have that son, Angelo, who's six. And we haven't heard much dirt about them. There's them, there's Anna Camp and Skylar Austin, and then Michelle Williams and her husband, whom we didn't even know about, Phil Elverum split. Yeah. And I was shocked by Adele and Simon and Michelle and Phil. Yeah. Those were the two splits that shocked me. I don't really care about Anna Camp. Sorry, no, Anna nobody Camp. Does. <laughs> if you're listening, I love Anna Camp. I think she's a great actress, but I never pay any attention to her personal life. I don't think she talks about it a lot. She's not one of those celebrities out there. Yeah, but she and Skylar, they were always on red carpets together. I found a million photos of them together. Okay. Um. But yeah, she didn't talk about it. But then again, I'm not aware that she's like constantly being interviewed either. So I have no idea. Yeah. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry for them. I mean, you know, <laughs> oh, well to them, but I'm sure she'll find someone else. But Michelle Williams and Phil, that one shocked me because everything I think I know about Michelle is that she's so cautious. All of her relationships have just been very quiet, reserved, cautious. She would never get engaged. Yeah. She would never She's never like, been married before. Yeah, I don't think she even lived with a guy. Maybe she and Jason Segal got close to that, but it never really worked out. Oh, I forgot they were together. She just took her time. And then she like up and marries this rocker or folk rocker. And she doesn't tell anyone. They elope. She tells Vanity Fair. She breaks the news in Vanity Fair. And then a few months later, like less than eight months later, she and the guy are over. How does that make any sense? How is that in character for her? Oh, you remember all? Renee Zellweger, Zellweger and what's his face? The country guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, that reminds me. I forget me. his name. Like that maybe Mr. it was. Kenny Chesney. Kenny Chesney. Yeah. Remember how she filed when she filed for divorce? She said fraud. And everyone's like, oh, Ooh, he's gay. Yeah. <laughs> but that's like one of the boxes you check. So nobody knows. But that was a good theory. <laughs> but um, I don't even know what was going on. But I will say this. As soon as that announcement, the Michelle Williams announcement came out, I thought about Fosse Verdon because I've been watching that. It's really good. And she has crazy chemistry with Sam Rockwell. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And I don't. Think of her as someone who has a lot of chemistry with her leading men. She's not like sexy. She's not Miss Romantic Comedy. She doesn't do those kind of movies or projects where she has to be all sexy or romantic with someone. But she is with Sam Rockwell. And they've already had some really good sex scenes. I'm trying to think of that movie she did with Ryan Gosling, like Blue. But they were depressed and breaking up in that movie. It was like Blue something. Blue Valentine. Blue Valentine. And that they weren't even supposed to have chemistry, so she didn't. Yeah. Right. But I haven't really well, seen I don't seen know. Her I've only seen parts of that. Yeah, me too. I didn't watch the whole thing. But I haven't seen her in a lot. So. Yeah, because she mostly does these little tiny independent Indies, films yeah. that no one sees. Yeah. Yeah. But Fosse Verdon, man. Is that on like FX or something? Yeah. Sam Rockwell is playing Bob Fosse, the choreographer and director. And she plays. Gwen Verdon, who was one of his many wives, but I guess she was like the best wife. Okay. They collaborated on a lot of different projects. And I don't know, they just seem to really understand each other and love each other a lot, even though they were both very messy people. They were both very messy. 
so they're right. cute together. We'll <laughs> see what happens and if we learn any more dirt about that. But so far, there's nothing on any of these three yeah. couples other than that they broke up. And I think Adele and Simon have been over for a while. That's the way it sounds, that they've been over since last year. Okay. Which is sad because we didn't know. I just feel bad for Adele that if she's been living as a single mother for more than six months or so, and we didn't know. Maybe she likes it better that way, though, for now. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, she's yeah. very private. Yeah. She doesn't well, No, I mean, maybe to... she likes being without him because he bugged the shit out of her. <laughs> what I mean. Oh, that too. That <laughs> yeah. could be it. But she doesn't seem like that type. I think she probably wants to have him around more often, and that was one of the reasons that they broke up. Yeah, that's what they were saying. It was her schedule or touring or whatever, but that's too bad. So let's move on to the user questions and the feedback. So we got asked on Twitter if we get tips. This is from Pamela, and Katie also asked us, do you ever get stuff sent your way by publicists or other close sources? So we do get some tips sent, like news items, just from readers. Most of the time, we've already seen those. Um, once in a while, they're new and we haven't seen them. But we're online, you know, all day, so we we mostly see those. And you'll catch stuff too on Twitter. You get yeah, most. I get a lot of tips on Twitter, a lot of have you seen this, that kind of thing, which is how I saw the Olivia Munn thing. Oh, we do get some tips, like some interesting stuff. Sometimes it'll just be a story someone wants to tell us about a celebrity and they don't even want us to like even publish it or like reference it they just want to tell the story once in a while we'll get that yeah and i remember years ago someone emailed us about john mayer <laughs> do you remember that no one of their friends had like slept with john mayer and they totally <laughs> spilled the tea on what what he's like in bed oh yeah just vaguely I vaguely remember that because I don't really care about John Mayer. And we weren't even going to report that because who gives a shit? <laughs> like... <laughs> but I remember that email because it was so funny hearing about, you know, my friend slept with them and she said he was like this, this and this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I can dig that up. I never delete any email, so I'll see if I can dig that up. Hi, this is Katie recording this later. So we actually published this in 2010. I totally forgot about that because Shonda wrote it. It was in a story about John Mayer with Sinead Grimes, and it came in as a tip in December of 2010. Now this is secondhand, and it comes from a source, and we cannot verify that it's true, blah, blah, blah. But she wrote that a girlfriend of ours had been living in Spain, and she just came back from the holidays. She told us a story about the time she hooked up with John Mayer. She went to his concert and ended up hanging out with him and his band afterwards. She then went back to his hotel room to hook up. He insisted on having his own music play while they made out. He talked repeatedly about his penis like it was a third person in the room and kept asking her, do you like him? What do you think of him? Tell him you like him. He then stopped having sex to put on another playlist of his own music because the music stopped. She slept with a few musicians, athletes, etc., but she said he was the most narcissistic person that she's ever been with. Now back to my talk with Chandra. I got some weird email this week about some New Zealand celebrity I've never heard of. So we get these strange tips where it's just people wanting coverage for their client. We get a ton of publicist emails about celebrities at events. We get different photos sent to us. Sometimes we get invited to stuff, but we never go. Obviously, yeah. we're <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah. I like when we get promotional emails from fashion designers and yes. fashion companies. Those are my favorite. Oh, I love when we get promotional stuff, emails from jewelry companies. That's my favorite. Oh, okay. I'll make sure that all those are forwarded to you. I don't even see everything because I just let it go to my promotions tab and I don't always see it. We just got that thing about Taylor Swift wearing a $128 t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. But I remember during the Oscars this year, we got a bunch of emails about jewelry, and I love that. Yes. I mean, that happens a lot for the big events. They'll just paper emails to every blog, every outlet saying, my girl is wearing, you know, $100 million worth of diamonds. <laughs> and we're like, yes, finally, photos of diamonds. Just what we wanted. <laughs> and the magazine people send us, 
the Hearst magazine people are wonderful. They send us photos and excerpts from the interviews. And yeah. That's good. They're really nice. Hollywood Reporter sends us stuff, too. That's really nice. Yes. And Variety follows us on Twitter. So Hello, Variety. Oh, sweet. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Going back to the other question about tips and stuff, like sometimes we will be contacted by some someone that we're writing about. Let's just say that. Yeah. Compared to what just happened to the Fug Girls, everything that we've had has been kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, take it down or change it or whatever. Yeah. And Brandy Glanville gave you an interview that one time, or a few times actually, didn't she? She texted me on her blackberry and i didn't really understand everything she was texting but <laughs> <laughs> it was many years oh do you want to talk about who you talked to on the phone uh no because she <laughs> asked me not to talk about it but that was a okay. crazy conversation <laughs> i mean she didn't want to like be used as a source she didn't want it to be an interview but oh my god that was crazy so you talked to a can i give h- hints or yeah i mean <laughs> I used her for some blind items, but uh, yeah, she's a, let's say a 90s icon. (laughs) Yes, that's what I was going to call her. And she smoked through the whole thing. Yeah. She saw our coverage of her and wanted us to talk to her on the phone. So that was bizarre. Well, (laughs) she saw our coverage of her, but she also wanted to compliment me about something I was writing about another celebrity who she hated. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) And we still hate that person. And she's shown us over and over again. (laughs) This is like a huge blind item, right? (laughs) Yeah. Who is the 90s icon and who did she hate? (laughs) I remember that. (laughs) All right, let's move on to the comments of the week. So... This week, Jennifer Garner was named People's Most Beautiful, which, I mean, that's a publicist thing that happens. It was just so (laughs) random. Like, what is she in? What's she doing? (laughs) I thought it was nice that at least they picked an older woman. That's something. No, I felt like it was very patronizing towards people's readership. Yeah, People Magazine thinks that their readership is all 40-something soccer moms who worship Jennifer Garner. Maybe they're right. (laughs) Yeah, maybe they're right, but it still feels patronizing. (laughs) And my comment of the week was a response to, like, the first comment, everyone's like, meh. And then people are like, yeah, vanilla, uh, whatever. And then Bitchy Yogi said, now her shoe game, that's a thing of beauty, like the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. (laughs) That's funny. She wears these expensive orthotic looking shoes all the time. I don't judge her for her shoe choices. Like she wears some really (laughs) ugly shoes. Yes, granted, she does. I appreciate the fact that she's not wandering around in heels constantly because I'm not either. I wear flip flops or clogs most of the time anyway. So I know you hate wedges, but they are a good in between shoe because (laughs) they, they are comfortable and you can walk in them and they look nice. I have a lot of wedges, actually. I've, I have, I have yeah. a lot of flip flops, but <laughs> few of those. <laughs> I have. And I got this new pair of like Uggs type of booties. I got them uh, for Christmas, and okay. I wore them for like three months straight when it was so cold. <laughs> it was really cold, and we had a, a lot of mud and snow. And yeah. I have a pair like that too. They're comfy for the winter. Yeah, they were gray, and they had a little bit of sparkle to them. They were very cute. <laughs> so my comment of the week was from one of the many Lori Laughlin stories that we had. By the Sea just said, white privilege is real. She'll get off. And it started yeah. this like huge debate. Because I've been referencing white privilege in the Lori Laughlin stories for a while now. And it is white privilege. Yes. There isn't a debate about it. The reason that she's running to People Magazine to talk about how she's faith-based and how she's just too stupid to be able to do all these crimes, that's because she's white. Yeah. yeah. A black mother could not get away with that kind of defense. No. A black mother would not be able to go to People Magazine and say, oh, I was just too stupid to understand the laws. Or, I'm just a humble Christian woman. She couldn't say that. No. And it is white privilege to not acknowledge the fact that people in minority communities, the disenfranchised communities, are 
being found guilty of much lesser crimes and having to go to jail for a lot longer. Yes. Anyway, I don't sorry. understand how that. No, no, you don't have to apologize. <laughs> You're totally right. I agree with you. And and those are white people making those comments. <laughs> there are people who still complain about us because they think we're racist against white people. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously? I know. I see those comments too in movies. And they always crack me up. Oh my God, you're being so racist against white people. Oh, honey, that's not a thing. No, it's not a thing. <laughs> it It is bad. And it's funny and it isn't because we shouldn't even be at this point as a society. Like those people should just kind of be told to shut the fuck up. But you look who, you know, it's just our situation. And we don't talk a lot in the podcast about the shit show that's happening in the government, but it would be nice to just have reality back again. Yeah. <laughs> to have a president who actually thinks it's bad to side with racists. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Or who isn't racist himself. Yeah. You know, to just yeah. have a president who is actually ashamed to say something racist. That would be nice. Yeah. yeah. It would be nice if everybody could be ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> it is shameful. Yeah, anyway, blah. All right. All right. Thanks for listening, bitches. Thanks, bitches. Thank you for listening to this Lebitchy podcast. If you could please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or your platform of choice, it will really help us, and we appreciate it a lot. You can call us and leave a voicemail at 434-218-3219. Our website is celebrity.com, and we're also on Twitter under that handle and on Instagram as Celebrity Official. Thanks again.